Today, we need to talk about a crisis in our community, student suicide. This semester alone, four students have killed themselves at NC State University. The latest death comes a little over a week after the university gave students a wellness day off from classes to focus on their mental health. Our Wolfpack community is hurting and asking questions over the sad and tragic loss of students this year. Now more than ever, it's important that we take care of ourselves and each other. I recognize that one day off from class is not a fix-all solution for the way many of us are feeling, but please know that we'll do all we can as a university to offer support and resources to help. University officials report that a sophomore died of suicide at a student housing complex on Thursday. After the death, the school released a statement saying in part, words can't express how sad and difficult this is for our students and campus. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 15 to 24 in the U.S. And men are about four to six times more likely to die of suicide. Well, we talked with mental health experts across the triad today about what signs parents should be looking for in their students and ways to make sure that they do get the mental health care that they need. These are different times uh, than even just a few years ago, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic in the mental health world. Clinical psychologist Dr. David Gutterman is the director of Labauer Behavioral Medicine. There's been a dramatic increase in um, stress and depression among, among college students. So this is not unique to just NC State. Unfortunately, it's uh, somewhat epidemic across uh, all academic institutions. So there are, signif there are significant rises in uh, mental health issues among, uh, among college students these days. College, if anyone has ever been or just experienced any kind of life stress or whatsoever and being on your own uh, can come with a different array of emotions, to be quite honest with you. And just pay attention to any particular changes that may be going on. Jaron Doby is an outpatient mental health specialist with Novant Health, and he says more people may be impacted by mental health disorders than you may realize. Actually, one in four adults. Um, experience a mental illness uh, within a given year here in the United States. And as it pertains to suicide, it's a lot more common than folks may think as well. Um, in the United States, I believe that there is around between 120 to around 130 odd suicides a day. There's a lot of publicity around suicides and things like that when it happens. Talk to them about how they feel about that. If they had friends who have had those feelings, if they ever had those feelings. And um, Keep the communication open. Both mental health experts that we talked to say there are signs that parents can look out for, even from afar, and that includes the academic struggles, pulling back socially, not taking care of themselves physically, a change in eating or sleeping habits, and changes in mood or energy. The smallest of details can be the most significant thing that can save someone. So everyone, please pay attention to yourselves. Pay attention to the ones that you love. And, and the ones that you are aware of, because that is the one thing that can make a difference. You can sometimes assess just through phone calls. If they are uh, closer, they're not across country at a, at a college, but they are down the road at NC State, UNC, you know, or uh, App State, you know, someplace drivable, periodic visits, especially if they, if they describe to you they're having some difficulties. So if you believe that your student is struggling, you can help them by doing research about different mental health care options in their area. Collaborate with them to get the right care. And at the end of the day, remind them that there are resources available to them 24-7. We cannot forget uh, the new 988 um, suicide crisis line to be able to call. Of course, you think 911 for physical emergencies, 988 for mental health related emergencies. Folks can get into direct contact with a trained crisis professional um, that can also make sure that they pair you with resources that are local to your area. It's a resource that's being used a lot more nowadays. Data shows call volume for 988 jumped 32 percent over the same month last year. But some online have said they're still hesitant to call, worried the folks on the other end would know where they are and send police. To help make you feel more comfortable about reaching out, Ariana Daytill verifies what really happens when you call. Our sources are the Federal Communications Commission, 988 Suicide Crisis Lifeline, and the National Emergency Number Association. 
the FCC determines which companies and services are allowed to use geolocation. They told Verify that unlike 911, geolocation services are not currently enabled for 988. That applies to call, text, and chat features. According to the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline website, the Lifeline will route a person's call to a mental health counselor at their nearest crisis center by using their phone number's area code. 988 doesn't directly transfer calls to 911, according to April Hines, 911 Operations Director for the nonprofit National Emergency Number Association. If a person is at imminent risk of harming themselves or someone else and is unwilling or unable to share their location information, counselors will provide any information they have, such as a person's phone number or a chat user's computer IP address, to 911 operators. Then the 911 dispatcher uses the phone number or IP address to locate the caller and send police. But according to Nina and SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, this is rare. They said fewer than 2% of calls require this type of action. So we can verify, no. The 988 Suicide Prevention Lifeline does not automatically send your location to police. They could, however, share some of your information with 911, which the police could use to locate you if they think you could be at risk of harming yourself or others. Well, the growing problem of youth suicide has the attention of both political parties in Congress. In fact, a Republican and a Democrat senator came together with a proposal to help save lives. Natalie Brand introduces you to a family who would have benefited from their plan. We were so close in so many ways. Darlene Terryberry of Henderson, Nevada, lost her beloved granddaughter, Angel, in the fall of 2020. I wish she had been able to talk so that we would be sitting together today. The high school senior is one of 30 students within the Clark County School District who died by suicide since the pandemic began. The pandemic, the online schooling, you know, that isolation was probably a contributing factor. We want to do everything we can to prevent those deaths. Senator Jackie Rosen of Nevada and Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska have introduced a bipartisan bill to provide federal funding through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration to public schools K through 12. Currently, that money is only available for colleges and universities. And a teacher could be a first line of defense. Anybody that works in a school should be trained to recognize the signs of distress for the students that would be in their age group at that school. Oftentimes it is just even knowing, even knowing that there is an issue there. Um, if a child doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable sharing this with a parent or another uh, adult, I really wasn't sure if anything was wrong. For years, Alaska teen Claire Rainier kept her pain hidden from her family. It was dark. It was really difficult. I kept doubting my experience. Um, and at the time, I was self-harming. Rainier, now 19, found healing at the Anchorage-based organization Mental Health Advocacy Through Storytelling. It's very cathartic. It's very therapeutic to talk about your feelings and to talk about what you went through. Rainier hopes the new proposed bill would help fund similar programs in schools nationwide. If one family, just one, doesn't have to go through the pain and anguish that my family has gone through. A grandmother's urgent plea for action to honor her granddaughter and help other young people. The bill's sponsor says the legislation has been stuck in the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee since February. But check out who runs that committee. Recognize that guy? North Carolina's Richard Burr is a ranking member. I reached out to him today to see where the bill stands now. I will let you know when I hear back. Well, if you or someone that you know needs help, it is only a phone call away. Really, all you have to do is dial 988 to be connected with a trained mental health professional. WFMY News 2 at 6 is next.